Hello and welcome to another video gig for YouTube. My name is Joey and I want to thank you for stopping by. In this video I will be showing you three ways to share files between your Windows and Linux systems. There will be lots more on this channel so I highly recommend you subscribe and click on the bell icon so you'll be notified when more videos are released. Now, let's get on with the intro. Roll camera. Sharing files between Linux and Windows doesn't need to be a chore. It's actually pretty easy and doesn't take much to set up, if you're using the right tools. This video will show you three different ways to do it. On most networks today, there's a good chance you're in a mixed environment. That is, where both Windows and Linux systems are both being used. With very little effort, you can share important files between Linux and Windows hosts in either direction. Here is what we will be covering. The three different ways you can share or copy all your files, what you need to install on both operating systems, and how to configure it all up and quickly. That's it. No fluff, no boring bits, just the steps required. After watching this quick video, you will soon be copying and sharing files between Windows and Linux in no time. So let's get to it. Welcome back. Thanks for sticking around. Here's option number one on copying files between Windows and Linux systems. We will use the command line to share or copy our files. The tool we're going to use is the PuTTY's PSCP program. If you haven't heard of the PuTTY suite of tools, well, my friend, where have you been? PuTTY provides an excellent suite of tools. PSCP, short for PuTTY Secure Copy, allows you to use the SSH protocol for securely copying files between your systems. PuTTY also comes with a pretty cool terminal emulator, which is also called PuTTY. Now if you're confused, don't worry, as it will all make sense shortly. Let's go to the PuTTY website to download the suite of tools. We will then install it on our Windows system. You can choose to either, download and install all of the tools on offer, which makes up the PuTTY suite. Just select the installer. Or click to download any of the individual XE files you want instead. Before going any further, I will assume you already have an SSH server set up and running on your remote Linux workstation. This will allow the Windows SSH client, or PSCP tool, to establish a session with that Linux system. If you don't have one already set up, then check out our SSH server setup video on this channel. As I already have the PuTTY suite installed on my Windows system, I won't download it again. So let's move on and use the PSCP tool to copy a file over to our remote Linux workstation. The PSCP command is made up of the following parts. First, it's the command itself. Next, the file's name, which is the name of the file you want to copy. You can just enter the name of the file if it's within the same folder you are currently in. Or, enter the full path to the file if it resides in another folder. Next it's the username and hostname of the remote system you want to connect to. Next is a colon character, followed by the remote path or folder name where we want to save the file. If you don't supply a folder name after the colon character, then the file will be saved within your home folder on the remote system. That's it. Now, open up a Windows terminal and type the following. PSCP. Now let's complete the command by adding the path to the file that we want to copy. Then add the remote Linux account credentials. Straight after adding the hostname we add a colon character. Then the file path on the Linux system that we want to save the file to. Now press enter. Enter your account password for the remote Linux computer. Then hit enter again. Done. Your file is now copied over. Now that we have copied a Windows file over to our Linux computer, 
Let's see how we can use the PSCP tool again to copy a file back. Type PSCP again. This time we'll just enter the username and host name of our Linux workstation. Let's not forget the colon character. Followed by the file source location. Here I used a forward slash to separate the folder and file as this is my Linux system, and now I enter the name of the file we want to copy back. Enter a space then provide the location where we want to save our file to. In this example, I will use my documents folder. Now hit enter. I'm prompted for my Linux account password again. So I will just enter that. And that's it. As you can see it took no time at all to copy the small text files in both directions. If you're not a fan of using the command line to copy or share your files, then you will be interested in the next part of this video where we start using a graphical user interface to achieve the same task covered here. Now let's have a look at using a GUI tool to copy or share our files between Windows and Linux systems. The tool we will use here is called WinSCP and it's available from winscp.net. Let's download the tool and install it onto our Windows system. At the time this video was created, we were using version 5.13.2 of the program. Now that the program has been downloaded, let's install it. Click accept to agree to the license agreement. Who reads license agreements anyway? You should. That's who. Let's move on. I'll just use all the default options on this install. Now if you have PuTTY installed, you will get a pop-up asking if you want to import sessions or sites that are stored in PuTTY. We didn't use the PuTTY tool in this video, but instead, we used its cousin, PSCP. It stored our previous session information when we used it in the first part of this video. Let's move on. Click yes to import the site. Uncheck the second checkbox then click on the finish button. The program should now start up. You should be presented with the WinSCP GUI interface. The first thing you will notice is that the program has our site already imported. Click on the imported site name. Here it's bobscuter.home. I know, not a very original name. Just trying to be humorous. Bad attempt. Now click on the login button. Your Windows computer will attempt to connect to the Linux workstation using secure FTP. That's after you authenticate first. So enter your Linux account credentials here. You should now be connected to the remote computer. The WinSCP interface is now divided into two sections. On the left here is what is represented on my Windows computer. On the right, is the file system on my Linux computer. Now to copy a file over is as simple as a drag and drop. First I will choose which folder to copy my file to. This just turns out to be the same folder that was chosen earlier, when we used the command line tool, PSCP, remember? Or have you forgotten already? No. First, let me delete the two files we copied earlier using the PSCP command line tool. Let's now go and copy a file. Boom! It was that easy. Let's try copying over a second file. Easy peasy. Let's delete the file I just copied over and this time, let's move the file instead of copying it over. Done. Let's now close this session. The final way we can share files between your Windows and Linux systems is by using Samba. Samba is an open source suite that provides stable and fast file and print services for your computers. It uses the SMB or SIS protocol. If you don't know what all that means, don't spaz out. It's just a way two computers can talk to each other. When Samba is installed and properly configured on a Linux system, it can be used to offer folder or file shares to other systems on the network, including Windows. 
It can also be used as a client to connect to other system shares as well. Before you can access or share files on your Linux systems, you need to make sure Samba is installed and configured first. So let's do this now. First, go to the Linux system that you want to use for accessing or sharing files, then bring up a terminal window. We're going to perform a package update first. Then we'll install Samba. Let's go. In this section of the video, we're using a Raspberry Pi that is running the Raspbian Stretch operating system. The commands that follow should work on most Ubuntu or Debian based systems. To get the latest package updates available for your system, type in the following commands. sudo apt-get and update. Great. Now that package updates have been completed, let's now install Samba. Type sudo which is short for super user do. apt install then samba after the installation finishes all you have to do now is configure samba by creating one or more shares to be offered to other systems on your network the main samba configuration file is located at slash etc slash samba slash smb.com before making any changes to this file it's a good idea to back up the original. You don't want to be stuck if your changes cause problems. Now type sudo cp slash etsy slash samba slash smb.com, which is the original file we want to back up. Then we need to add the destination location to save the file. Here, I'm using the tilde character, which is represented by a curvy horizontal line and situated at the top left of most keyboards. This character is just a shortcut to your home directory. It saves us from writing the full path which is longer. OK, press Enter. This makes a copy of the smb.con file to your home directory. Now, let's edit the original file. Use your favorite text editor. This video uses Vi, because, well, why not? Type the following to open the file in Vi. OK, let's perform a search. We need to comment out a few lines first before we start creating shares. Type in a forward slash. Then type homes. Now hit enter. We're commenting out these lines in this section as we don't want Bob's account profile folders to be visible to all on the network. Here are the completed lines of text, under the home's title, where I added a hash character in front. Now, on your keyboard, use either the down arrow, or the page down key, to go down to the very bottom of the file. To start entering a line of text, hit I, on your keyboard to enter insert mode. Now start writing your text as you would do in any text editor. Add the following to create your first Samba share. So, what did you just type in? Let's quickly go over what each line means. Documents. This is where you give a Samba share a name. This can be visible to other computers on your network. Comment. Here, you can add a short description about the share. I used a bad example. Please add a better one for yours. Path. This is the path to the directory to be shared. In this example, the documents folder of Bob's account will be shared. Browsable. This just enables Windows clients to browse to, or see, the shared directory using Windows Explorer in Windows 7, or File Explorer, in Windows 10. Guest OK equals no. This prevents everyone on your network getting access to the share. As we stated a no. An account password must be supplied to successfully connect to the share. If you want everyone to be able to access the share, change no, here, to a yes. Read only equals no. If you want to be able to save files to this share, you need this to be a no. And finally, create mask. This is the permissions that are applied to files when they are dropped into the share. Or when files are created, in that share. Now, you will want to type all of this, for every share you want offered by this Linux system. Let's create one more. While the share created here is tied to the user named Bob. This share will be available for everyone on the network to get files from, but they won't be able to save any files to it.
Now that Samba is configured, save the smb.con file to keep the changes made. To do this in Vi. I hit escape to make sure I wasn't in insert mode. Then I typed a colon character. Followed by W. Then Q. And enter. This writes the file to disk, then quits Vi. The share we just created, which points to the path, slash, srv, slash, samba, slash, share. Needs to have the actual folder created at that path. Let's do this now. Type in the following. Here the minus p switch. Gets the make dir command to create the entire directory if it doesn't exist. Great. We're almost done. Samba uses a special password file which is different to the standard Linux one used for system accounts. Samba passwords are stored at slash etsy slash samba slash smb pass wd. We need to create a Samba password for the user that will be connecting to the document share created on this system. In this case it will be Bob, used in this video. Substitute Bob for the user account on your Linux system. Let's go. Type in the following command to create a Samba password for Bob. Enter a password for the new Samba user. Now as Bob will be maintaining the two shares we just created, we need to make sure he has the appropriate permissions to write and edit in both folders. Bob already has these permissions with the documents share, as it already exists in his desktop account. We can check that by typing ls minus l d slash home slash bob slash documents. Let's make sure that only Bob can access this folder only. Type in the following chmod a space 700 slash home slash bob slash documents then enter let's have another look at the documents folder to see the applied permissions good job bob is the only one who can read write or execute in his documents folder now let's make sure bob has read and write permissions for the second share created earlier Type the following commands. sudo cho own. Then the account name of the person who will administer this share. In my case it's Bob. Add a colon character. Then Bob again. Add a space. Finally the path. Hit enter. Good. Now as we intend other users to access this share. We only want them to have read permissions only. Let's configure that now. Type chmod. Space. 7 0 5 space slash srv slash samba slash share then enter check the results there bob is the only one with read write and execute permissions for everyone else well they only have read and execute permissions to this shared folder let's now see the fruits of our labor the final step is to restart the samba server to enable the new configuration so type sudo systemctl restart smbd.service and nmbd.service. Now hit enter. Good stuff. You're awesome. Let's now see if we can connect to these two shares from a Windows system. Okay. I am now on my Windows computer. And I'm logged in as Joey. If I now start up File Explorer. Let's connect to the new share on the Linux box that we just created. Keep in mind that I am logged in as Joey, not Bob. Why did I mention this? You'll see why shortly. Up in the File Explorer address box, I type in the host name of my Linux computer. Which in my case, is, Bobsputer. You can also just type in, the IP address of your Linux computer, that has the Samba share on it. Great. We now see the two new shares we created earlier. Let's first connect to this share, and test the Samba permissions we applied to it. Here we see the contents of this share. Let's open this document. Great. We can access and open the document. But can we delete it? No. Can I copy this document over to my desktop? Great. I can. I can even delete the copy I made. Can I rename the document in this share? Not at all. We can't delete or even edit this document from this share. 
This is a result of the permissions we applied to the Samba share when we created it. Remember the read only, and guessed OK, Samba options? Also, we applied read and execute file system permissions as well. Let's now go back and see if we can access the other share, named documents. No way, Jose. You're not getting in here. Well as Joey in this case. We get an access denied message. And are asked to supply the appropriate credentials to connect to this shared folder. Now if I knew Bob's account name and password, I could enter that here and connect successfully. So let's go back and re-log in to this Windows computer as Bob. Then let's see what we can do with these two new Samba shares. Back at File Explorer. Let's connect to the same Linux computer and the new Samba shares. Okay. Can we open the Documents folder? Cool. We can. Can we now change the content of this document? And save it? If I could do a dance move right now, I would. But there was no budget for that in this project. I can even create a copy of the document in this share. And even delete it. I have full control as I am logged in as Bob. Now what happens if I access that other share? And make a change to the document stored there. Again, I cannot because of the read only and file permissions we applied. Before we sign off on this video, I want to quickly show you how to map a new drive letter to the documents share that we created. This is so that whenever Bob, or your Windows user account, wants to quickly save a file to the Samba share, he can. Let's get it done now. Here we are again back at File Explorer. The first thing I want to do is access this PC to map a new drive letter. Good. Now up in the menu bar. Select. Computer. No. Not view. I said computer. My video editor needs to listen better. That's it. Now choose. Map network drive. Choose a letter to be assigned to your new mapped share. Here I'll choose B for Bob. Type in the network path to the Samba share that you want to assign to letter B. Just like before. I'm typing the host name of my Linux computer. An IP address will work here as well. After the host name, I add a backslash then the name of the share. This assigns the mapped drive directly into the document's share. Finally, click the finish button. Bang! There it is. Let's open it. There you go. Well done. Achievement unlocked. Now when you want to save files over to your Linux computer, you just have to save it to the new drive letter. The SMB protocol and the wonderful Samba software will copy it over to your Linux box for you.